I'll call to order the December 12, 2016 regular business meeting of City Council. Mr. Hamp, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll remind those in attendance, if you wish to speak tonight during citizen comment period, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. The first item of business is consideration of the consent agenda. Is our motion to adopt? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item three is a proclamation for Lee Lodge, and I don't think we have anybody here tonight from Lee Lodge, so I presented it last week, so we're good to go on that. Number four is matters from council members. Does anybody have anything they'd like to bring to the table tonight? I guess I'll just give a, a quick update on uh, questions I'd had of staff for the, to the, uh, the de-icing uh, program and that um, uh, this per that's been, this, uh, requests have been made, the purchases have been, and the parts have been ordered. It comes from various vendors, and so the arrival of those come at different times, and um, and as such, and so I just wanted to manage expectations a little bit, is that there may be uh, um, a winter event uh, before that equipment is ready to be placed into service, um, but we believe that that uh, at, at, at worst case scenario would be available after January the 30th, uh, but certainly um, our Awesome public work staff will do all they can to, to get that in service um, as the parts become available. <coughs> and uh, so again, just manage expectations a little bit. So in other words, we just want rain until February. We just want rain until February, exactly. Right. Takes care of that. <coughs> Item five is to receive a presentation from Dittlewick and Company, certified public accountants of the city's comprehensive annual financial report for the physical year ending June the 30th, 2016. Mr. Shaw. Mr. Mayor, <coughs> if you'd indulge me just a second, uh, one of our TV crews, Cheryl Hildebrand, is an engineer in our IT department and is celebrating her 39th <coughs> year anniversary with the city as oh, of wow. today. She came to work here 39 years ago in 1977. Well, and Cheryl is a uh, she's a diligent employee, but she's also a lot of fun to work with. And on a personal note, Cheryl and I were in Miss Driver's first grade elementary school class together. <laughs> and um, back in the day, I'm not going to say how far back <laughs> today, but uh, so anyway, I wanted to acknowledge that that's quite a career in public service. Well, I think I remember the first day she came to work because she started in the police department and I was a police officer at the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I won't tell you how, what her age was then, so you <laughs> could do the, yeah, but uh, she is a fantastic person, a fun person to uh, work with and uh, I'm glad she's uh, stayed with us and hope she continues to stay a little bit longer. Amen. Mr. David Didowick is here with his team from Didowick and Company present the city's comprehensive annual financial report, the CAFR, for fiscal year ending June 30, 2016. And while the CAFR contains a great uh, wealth of financial information, uh, and I'm sure the city council will want to explore some of that, um, uh, especially as it may pertain to a change in fund balance and the portion of fund balance, uh, unassigned portion of fund balance that you may reallocate to capital projects. Uh, the primary purpose of the CAFR is to assess if the city has fairly reported its financial position in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. And then secondarily, uh, the annual audit process uh, can and does evaluate internal financial practices and controls. With that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Didwick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shaw, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, city staff, and the citizens of Waynesboro. We're delighted to be here tonight to review the FY16 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report for the city of Waynesboro. With me tonight uh, are three of the individuals that uh, spend extensive time on this engagement. 
Randy Huffman to my left manages the engagement. Katie Gerbel, uh, she and Randy put this report together that we'll be discussing tonight. And Dustin Didowick, yes, there is a relation, uh, <laughs> is our firm's uh, accounting and auditing manager. The process of auditing is very important, but it's also important to understand what an audit is by an independent firm. An audit is a, pre, is a, a rendering an opinion that the financial statements that are presented by an organization are fairly presented in accordance with general accepted accounting principles of the United States. What it is not is that every penny is in the right place. And what it's also not is it's really not a performance review of the city, meaning the purpose of an audit is not to determine whether the services that the city provided were necessarily provided efficiently or inefficiently, but that in all material respects, the, rep the financial report of the city is correct. If I could tr turn your attention to page one of the audit report, this is our independent auditor's report where we are stating that, and if you go to the bottom of that first page, this is our opinion. This is what you're paying us to do. And we arrive at this opinion by a series of testing and by meeting professional standards on a sample basis and reviewing transactions and internal controls of the city to make sure they are in accordance with standards. If I could then turn your attention to page 3A, this is the city's management discussion and analysis. I find this particular part of this report to be extremely beneficial. This was put together by your finance department. It is a place where you are able to analyze the overall operations of the city financially and also compare it to prior year activities. So I encourage all of you to look at this in detail. I'm now going to turn the report over, or the presentation over to Katie. Uh, as I said earlier, she is one of the people that put this report together. Uh, I appreciate Katie being here tonight because she's suffering with a really bad cold, but uh, she is the most knowledgeable with these numbers. So Katie. I'd like to start the financial portion of this presentation on page four with exhibit one. This is the statement of net position for the governmental activities and the business type of activities as well as the component unit school board. These statements are presented on the full accrual basis. They will include all of your capital assets and the long-term debt of the city. If you remember last year, we had GASB 68 implementation which required us to report the full net pension liability, and we also had a large adjustment to net position that year. So now that we have two years presented under GASB 68, these statements will be more comparable to the prior year. Um, the, the main change is a slight decrease in your liabilities just due to the current year debt repayment. I also want to point out there is a negative unrestricted net position in the governmental activities, $6 million. The reason that's presented in the, in the primary government column is because the debt associated with the component unit school board assets is the responsibility of the city and reported by the city, but those capital assets are reported in your right-hand column for the school board. If you will look at exhibit two on page five, or statement of activities, this will break out by function and program the different expenses and revenues of the city. The overall change in net position for the governmental activities was $6.3 million, which may seem like a lot, but I don't want you to think that that's a change in the city's cash balance for fiscal year 16. Um, of that $6.3 million, $5.2 million of that is your reduction in debt when compared to the prior year. So it's not a cash change. On pages six and seven, we have the balance sheets for the governmental funds. 
These statements focus on the near-term assets and liabilities of the city. They do not include capital assets and long-term debt. Um, I do want to point out that the self-funded health insurance fund is a new major fund for fiscal year 16, and that's mainly because it was a new fund in 15 with only six months of activity, and this was the first year with a full year of activity, and due to those material revenues and expenditures, it was required to re be reported as a separate column as a major fund. Uh, the ending fund balance for the governmental funds was $20.7 million. This is a $2 million increase from the prior fiscal year. Uh, I do want to point out the unassigned fund balances of the general fund also increased. That increase was $1.2 million, but the majority of that was made up of the $0.7 million of unspent education funds that were returned from the school board but also from the $0.8 million increase in fund balance in the general fund, that all went to unassigned because it is not assigned in other individual funds. Um, we can look at the increase, the $2 million increase in more detail <coughs> on, sorry, wrong page, on page nine, exhibit five. This is the statement of revenues and expenditures and changes in fund balances for the governmental funds. Your overall revenues for the governmental funds increased $3.9 million from the prior fiscal year. This was mainly due to $3 million increase in the self-funded health insurance fund, which is contributions from employees and retirees into that fund. Total expenditures of the governmental funds actually decreased $15.7 million, but of that amount, 19.5 million of that amount was from the refunding of debt in the prior year. But there's also an increase in expenditures in the government, general government administration due to that self-funded health insurance fund and claims that were paid out by the city for those health insurance claims. The overall net change in fund balance for the governmental funds was a positive $2 million to end at $20.7 million. <coughs> Excuse me. On page 11, we have the budget to actual comparison for the statements of revenues and expenditures. I'm not going to go into detail on these individual items. I do want to refer you to the Finance Department's Management's MDNA, um, especially page 3I. That will give you a breakout of specific changes between budget and actual. But overall, your revenues had a $1.4 million favorable variance, your expenditures had a $2.1 million favorable variance, and the final budget had originally projected a $3 million use of fund balance. So taking into account those favorable variances, we can come back to the actual $0.8 million increase in your fund balance. On pages 12 to 13, we have the statements of net position for the proprietary funds. These are the enterprise funds, the business type activities. There's only two items that I really want to point out that were major changes from the prior year. Your liabilities decreased $1 million due to current year debt repayments. But also in the other enterprises fund column, we have the stormwater fund that was new for fiscal year 16. It was not material enough of a fund to be reported as a major fund, so it's lumped in there with the other enterprise funds, such as the garbage and the landfill. On page 14, Exhibit 9, we have the Statement of Revenues, Expenses, and Changes in Fund Net Position for these proprietary funds. The overall operating revenues increased $1.1 million, but that was mainly all due to the stormwater fund charges for services <coughs> that were collected that were new this year. You will notice that the only <coughs> excuse, enterprise fund that had a negative change in net position was the sewer fund, it was a negative $0.6 million, but the city has already addressed this issue and has increased the sewer f um, fees for fiscal year 17 to cover these operating expenditures of that fund. 
On page 17, Exhibit 11, this is a statement of fiduciary net position for fiduciary funds. These are the funds where the city is the fiscal agent and those funds are held on behalf of other parties such as the first aid crew and the Criminal Justice Training Academy. Then starting on page 18, we have the notes to the financial statements. I'm not gonna go through these in detail, but there are specific ones related to the capital assets and long-term debt and net pension liability that will provide further detail of the numbers presented. <coughs> on pages 61 to 64, we have the required supplement information. This is related to the net pension liability and other post-employment benefits that the city is required to report and the liabilities they are now required to report in the face of the statements. Um, these relate to all the city employees as well as the school non-professional employees because the professional employees are covered by the state. For pages 65 on, that will include all the combining schedules and individual funds schedules. Everything rolls forward to the statements we've already looked at, but if you would like more detail on an individual fund as well as the separate school board funds, all of that detail and supplemental information can be found there. I will now turn it over to Randy for the compliance section. Good afternoon. Uh, if you would flip to pages 122 and 123 of the report. Uh, this is our report on the internal control over financial reporting required by government auditing standards. This report identified one material weakness that we'll discuss in the schedule of findings and question costs. Uh, on page 124 to 125 is our report on compliance for each major program required by the uniform guidance. We issued an unmodified report as the city complied with all the compliance requirements that could have a direct and material effect on the major programs that were tested during the current year. On pages 126 and 127 is our schedule of findings and question cost. Item 1G lists the federal programs that were tested as major programs during the current year. Also, I will draw your attention to item 1H as the uniform guidance replaced the OMB circular A133 required by a single audit. The uniform guidance also changed the threshold for the type A, type B programs that are considered major. The threshold used to be 300,000 and under the uniform guidance, it's now 750,000 to determine the major programs. Item two notes the finding related to the financial statement audit. Uh, finding 08-1 is a repeated material weakness due to the material adjustments being necessary for the city records to be in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. Um, also under item two is the city and the school board's response to this finding. On pages 128 to 130 is the city's schedule of expenditures of federal awards. This lists each federal granting agency and the amount of federal expenditures for each program for the current year. I'll now turn it back to David for closing remarks. Uh, so I'm very pleased to be able to report that we were able to issue the unmodified opinion. Some of you may have heard of this referred to previously as a clean opinion. Uh, I also want to compliment the city staff uh, from the manager's office right through. We had no difficulty dealing with anyone and, and being able to obtain the information we needed to complete the audit. And uh, they uh, demonstrated uh, tremendous professionalism during our processes. I'd like to see if there's any questions uh, from any members of council at this time? Anyone have questions? No, sir. What I would, what I strongly recommend that you do is if you, in reviewing this in more detail, if you ever have questions regarding the finances of the city, 
You have a very professional finance department here, and I encourage you to consult with them uh, if, in fact, you would like us to uh, meet with you at any time to uh, give you any additional guidance, we'd be happy to do that. But you're very fortunate here to have excellent people on staff. It's a, it's a real privilege to be able to serve the city and an honor to continue uh, after so many years of service. And again, I want to thank each member of the city staff, the school board, and the, uh, and the uh, EDA for their help in completing this process. And I certainly wish all of you a very happy holiday. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> <coughs> Item 6A is to consider approving an increase to the city pay scale to reflect inflationary factors and resulting increases to the consumer price index occurring over the last eight years. Mr. Hamm. Mayor Allen and members of council, um, at the November 28th meeting, you received a recommendation from me to increase the maximum compensation for each grade of the city's pay scale by 10.5%. And I think it's important to stress uh, for your benefit and for those in the listening public, including our employees, that what, we're, what I'm presenting tonight and what I've asked you to consider affects only the maximum pay element for each grade. Um, the current pay grades and associated scales were established in 2008 and have not been adjusted for inflationary or other market factors since. Um, this recommendation or my recommendation is further supported by the implementation of VRS contribution requirements in 2012, which were accompanied by a compensation increase for affected employees of 5.27% to keep those effective, affected employees whole. Um, in the period of time since 2009, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates that um, the CPI or the factor of inflation um, that has affected the economy ranges from about 12% to 14.3%. That fact, or those facts, and coupled with uh, the VRS implementation, in my view, um, warrant the adjustment to the pay scales um, uh, to the benefit of our employees, thereby improving our ability to attract and retain qualified employees. Um, it is important to note as well that um, if council approves this recommendation, it does not require an adjustment to the budget. Um, the increases contemplated um, in the current fiscal year have been factored in, and really um, what this does is it allows employees to realize or increase their potential earning power going forward. If you have any ad additional questions or um, require any clarification, I'm happy to respond to questions you may have. Any questions? Now, just to reiterate, too, because I think I, I'd asked the question about the consumer price index rate of inflation. So the 12% 12, 12 by comparison nationally, it's been 12 to 14.3%. And uh, your recommendation is an increase to uh, of that upper threshold uh, of 10.5%. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. All right, is there a motion to approve a 10.5 increase to the maximum compensation level for the city pay scale? Before we vote, Mayor, um, I am a city employee, just to let everyone know, and um, I have spoken with our city attorney, and because this affects everyone and not just my department, then we feel that I don't need to abstain from this vote. All right, great. So is there a motion? Uh, so moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Any other comments or discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Item 6B <coughs> is to consider approving the closure of Main Street on May the 6th, 2017 from 5.30 a.m. until 5 p.m. as requested by representatives of the Blue Ridge Soapbox Derby in order to conduct a 2017 Soapbox Derby race. Mr. Hamm. So Mayor Allen and members of council, um, as business activity has increased on the Main Street corridor, conducting and supporting the event in that location requires, I think, enhanced levels of communication, coordination, and accommodation of businesses operating during the event. 
Uh, staff has presented these considerations to Soapbox Derby representatives who have responded with an expressed willingness to modify the logistics and the manner in which the event is conducted. More specifically, the organizers have agreed um, to reduce their street closure request to Main Street from Maple to Main, excuse me, from Maple um, to the Main Street Bridge construction limits. Um, to communicate uh, directly with impacted business owners well in advance of the event date, and finally to facilitate uh, crossing stations on Main Street, allowing spectators and visitors to the downtown business district more convenient access to businesses on Main Street. Um, generally, beyond those um, accommodations, which are certainly appreciated, I would encourage um, the Soapbox Derby representatives to um, strengthen existing relationships with businesses downtown where they exist and also establish um, work to establish uh, relationships with business entities that they may not presently have um, communication or relationship with. I would tell you that um, or suggest to you that the ability to utilize Main Street as a venue for the event in future years will depend on um, the ability to recognize and mitigate the impacts of street closures and event have on uh, businesses operating um, while the event's going on. Um, the Soapbox Derby is a, a tradition in our community and I think um, contributes to our identity and health as a community. Um, certainly the benefits to the youth and the families who participate in the event are valuable and um, we want to recognize those as well as um, the volunteer effort and uh, contribution that Soapbox Derby event organizers um, apply uh, to the success of the event. And I think likewise um, in this env environment where our downtown is increasing um, in its thriving activity, um, increasing investment, it's important to uh, at the same time recognize the contributions um, and the importance of the businesses downtown um, that they make to our economy and the community. So having said that, I'd note that um, the street closure requests have been reduced simply to the main street, um, as not reflected in your application. And it'd be my recommendation that you approve the request. Thank you, Mr. Hamper. Are there any questions from council members? If not, is there a motion to approve the street closure? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Freeman and Ms. Anderson. Uh, any other discussion? I serve on that board uh, in a roundabout way. They have their meetings at nights that I have a conflict, so I haven't been able to attend any meetings over the last couple of years, and I can't really understand why they keep me on their board, but <laughs> I, I like to go help, and I do volunteer for them in any way I can, but I will abstain from the vote tonight. So all in favor of approving the closure of Main Street as requested, say aye. 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 And opposed, I'll abstain. So it carries four, four and one abstention. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7A is to consider adopting a resolution in support of Virginia's Certificate of Public Need Program for Medical Facilities as requested by Augusta Health. Mr. Hamm. As noted, this request comes to us from Augusta Health. Um, the COPN, or Certificate of Public Need Program, is a process by which medical facilities are approved and licensed by assessment and confirmation of a community or market's need or demand for a specific facility. According to Augusta Health, the CP, excuse me, the COPN program has uh, provided an effective regulatory structure since 1973, and essentially the process is intended to prevent uh, the oversupply of a particular facility in a market and in doing so, promote financial stability and viability among providers in that market. There are 36 states in, in, the, among, in our nation that operate uh, COPN programs, in, in including the District of Columbia. Last year's General Assembly session saw 18 pieces of legislation aimed at reforming or deregulating the COPN process. Uh, COPN deregulation or elimination uh, poses a threat uh, to the financial viability of Augusta Health and may drive uh, Augusta Health and other similarly sized organiz organized hospitals to consolidate. Medical services uh, delivered by hospitals vary um, in profitability and hospitals utilize uh, the proceeds from those more profitable service areas to offset services um, in areas in which they incur loss or have poor margins. 
Further, more than half of the consumers of hospital services are, um, excuse me, more than half of the services provided by hospitals are paid by Medicaid or Medicare, which while reliable third party payers, um, those um, payers do not reimburse typically at the full cost of the service delivered. Losses associated with emergency room and indigent care of particular concern for hospitals including Augusta Health. <coughs> So if proponents of COPN elimination or deregulation are successful, Augusta Health could lose the profitable benefit of providing services such as ambulatory surgery and imaging um, services, which would produce financial stress for the institution, consumers, and presumably the community. Um, this evening, uh, Mr. Alex Brown, uh, who is Vice President of Legal Affairs and Governmental Counsel for the hospital, is present. Should you have any questions um, related to the request, but uh, Council is asked to consider the resolution in support of the position. Um, and um, if Council approves the resolution, that uh, resolution will be used in communication from the city and by the hospital to delegates in the General Assembly as they prepare for the uh, upcoming session. Thank you, Mr. Hamp. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Hamp or Mr. Brown here? Uh, Mr. Martin. I've got some questions. I'm not even sure how to ask them. I know enough about this, but I've read a little bit of, on this, and I know there was apparently some movement to at least reform or modify or something. This, And I think we ought to hear something, you know, from that side of the issue, not just from the hospital, before the city takes a position. Do you know where you go get that information from? I don't know. Maybe we should talk to some of our delegates or, you know, what their experience was, why they, what they felt about it or why they thought it was introduced or in last, last year's session. So there were... Didn't no, the last um, hospital function that invited all the cities and county representatives to come, they covered this pretty well. And I was pretty impressed with their, their point of view. It sounded like something we need to consider. But I would like for you to cover a couple of those things. Sure, I'd just um, point out the uh, County Augusta Board has supported this resolution. The City of Stanton has supported this resolution. And we greatly appreciate you taking it under consideration this evening. Um, as stated by Mr. Hamp, um, you know, Augusta Health and healthcare in general is not a free market as kind of portrayed by some of the delegates in the previous session. Um, Augusta Health is required to be open 24 7, provide for emergency um, disaster relief preparedness. And um, as Mr. Hamp indicated, uh, about 60% of our reimbursement is below our cost. So the greatest concern for our hospital would be for a private institution to come and cherry pick some of the higher reimbursing commercial insurance services um, that would be detrimental in our ability to continue to provide some of these vital services for our organization and our community um, that are not provided at cost. In 2015, Augusta Health provided over $30 million in charity care within our community. And um, Certificate of Public Need helps uh, protect uh, the hospital's ability to continue to do that. Anybody else have comments? Well, I mean, it, to, to be not, I just trying to, in, in the simplest of terms, you've got a, a largely, arguably, a community organization, such as the hospital, gives away $30 million worth of free services to folks that can't afford it. You don't turn people away at the emergency room. You take care of them, you get them well, and they move on with their life. So then there's for-profit entities that want to come in and, and uh, siphon off all the stuff that you do make money off of. Well, you can't give away $30 million worth of free services um, and then uh, not be able to cover some of that loss with the more profitable mechanisms. So to have for-profit companies coming in and siphoning off and cherry-picking off of our community, of which your organization provides 
in excess of $30 million annually in care just seems crazy to me. So I, I, I certainly uh, intend on supporting the resolution. Thank you. Mr. Marks, does that clear any of it up for you, or would you still prefer to hold off? I mean, this is something that we've been talking about for some time uh, with the hospital and uh, well, but proceed on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like to come up and try to vote on something that I don't think we have the proper information to do <clears throat> vote. But if that's where you are. Well, I'm, I say go ahead and proceed. You know, I, I think it's the consensus appears to be that council wants to support it, so let's go ahead with it. Well, I, you know, have to agree with uh, what information we received and, and listening to uh, some people in the healthcare field. It's uh, it, it seems like it puts it at an uneven playing field because they can come in and cherry pick the the uh, people with the good insurance and take care of it and turn away the ones they that y'all can't turn away so basically that's kind of my all right then is there a motion to adopt the resolution so thank you mr freeman is there a second a second thank you mr short any other discussion if not all in favor of the adopting resolution say aye aye, aye. opposed nay four four and one against it carries Item 7B is to consider adopting a resolution authorizing the city manager and or the mayor to receive real property interest on behalf of the city of Waynesboro for the calendar year 2017. Mr. Patrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is an annual exercise that the council undertakes. Uh, the reason for this is there is a requirement for property interest to be accepted by an affirmative act. Uh, the reason for that is uh, when the liabilities for the underground petroleum storage tanks started to manifest, there was transfers um, from private individuals or corporations to governmental entities to try and avoid the liability for those cleanup air activities. Uh, one of the good examples I can give you as far as why this type of resolution is good for the council to adopt would be the Chatham drainage project that we had the last year or two. If we would have to go forward and have council accept all of those real property interests, in that case being easements, for every project, we would be having quite a bit of activity uh, at a, a lot of council meetings. Uh, this is something that I think is uh, reasonable to leave the discretion of the city manager and the mayor as to whether or not the property interests that are being offered are acceptable and are in the best interest of the city. So we would recommend that the council approve this resolution. <coughs> Thank you. Are there any questions concerning this matter? I, I would just ask that um, prior to uh, the acceptance and receiving of real property over that calendar year of next year, that uh, the council be made available through at least email correspondence prior, I think 24 hours prior to the action, so that if we do have any comments or concerns that we could share them with, with the mayor or city manager. And I have a comment that uh, all the times that it's been in effect that I've been on council, they've always made the opportunity to give me a call and tell me what their intentions were. So I appreciate that and assure that they will continue. Right. Thank you. I just thought through codification <coughs> process to <laughs> throw that out. So is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries five votes. Item 7C is to consider adopting resolution authorizing an incentive package to support the construction of a Virginia Museum of Natural History campus in downtown Waynesboro. Mr. Hamm. Mayor Allen and members of council, um, the council considered um, this resolution and um, information a year ago this time, uh, given that we have two new members and that um, the work in pursuit of a Waynesboro campus for the Virginia Museum of Natural History remains active, I think it would be helpful and beneficial to the cause to have this council um, confirm or reaffirm its support for the project, um, highlighting um, certain notes that it's estimated that 
the center would attract between 45,000 and 85,000 visitors a year. Um, that includes both residents in the region and visitors to the valley and tourists traveling um, on the Blue Ridge Parkway and the Skyline Drive. Um, the total job impact um, could be up to 20 jobs, and that would be direct and indirect job creation. But um, obviously this is an important opportunity that the city and our economic development authority have been working closely with the, excuse me, the museum representatives and their board. And so um, I expect that this year uh, the board, uh, excuse me, the museum will be um, requesting um, funding for engineering and architectural services to um, perhaps phase that project and um, hopefully create a more achievable um, opportunity for the General Assembly to um, fund the project. But um, this simply confirms um, the city's previously stated commitment and incentive program um, to establish a new, newly constructed campus in downtown Waynesboro. Thank you, Mr. Hamp. Is there any questions of Mr. Hamp? I would just ask that the resolution uh, include uh, the specific dollar amount that we're requesting. Um, uh, or again, if the museum's uh, uh, approach is to articulate a specific um, dollar amount, I think that should be reflected in the resolution. Okay. Is that? Not yes. Fair? I think we can um, incorporate a, an amendment on the final version. Yes. Uh, that's been asked for by council, and that could certainly be included. Okay. Anything else? So, is there a motion to adopt the resolution with the amendment, putting the amount? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor of adopting the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Seven days to consider adopting a resolution authorizing a city manager to purchase real property, 1018 West Main Street, for municipal or school purposes. Mr. Hamm. So you're, the council should be aware that I've entered into a contract to purchase that real property located at 1018 West Main Street. Um, we anticipate that um, the property will have value uh, both during and subsequent to um, the school renovation project. Um, the current assessed value is $184,700. Purchase price is $176,000. Um, the resolution is necessary in order for me to complete the purchase of the property. Are there any questions concerning this matter, Council? Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Ms. Anderson, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Short. Is there any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Carries 5 0. Item 8 is to receive a presentation from Deputy City Manager of the City's Quarterly Financial Report. Mr. Shaw. Mr. Mayor, members of Council, you've been provided the City's FY 2017 first quarter financial report for the period ending September 30th. Uh, the report details revenues and expenditures for the General Fund and the Enterprise Funds. The fund summary is provided with supporting departmental detail. Uh, this, the supporting detail provides an account description, the FY17 original budget, the FY17 amended budget, and the FY17 first quarter actual expenditures or revenues, and then a variance, which is the remaining fiscal year balance. And then finally, the percentage of funds spent or collected. With one qu quarter of the year elapsed, the city's total revenues and expenditures in the general fund and enterprise funds were at or near 25% within or within reasonable and explainable uh, limits. In reality, you shouldn't expect that all the revenues and expenditures would be at precisely 25% uh, because the revenue collection expenditure activity isn't distributed uh, evenly throughout the budget year. Um, my examination, Mr. Prevett's examination of the quarterly report would indicate that we're uh, tracking as budgeted. I uh, would note um, two items of perhaps interest. One is that in the first quarter, we've paid off the uh, debt on the Town Center Incentive Program, uh, which is something I think we've talked about um, for a number of years now, uh, that when that occurred that there would be um, nearly $800,000 of debt service relief 
And then uh, the other thing is just to be aware of, and it would not be something that you could glean from the first quarter report um, because it has to do with sales tax revenues, that we receive um, the state, our portion of state sales tax revenue on about a two month delay. So the uh, funds that were collected in uh, July, I'm sorry, in, in August and September, we don't receive until October and November. So they're not in the first quarter. However, we do, or we are aware of those numbers and we're tracking just uh, a little bit behind on state sales tax. And that's a, a big part of our budget. Uh, and it's not something that uh, necessarily to be alarmed about, but it's something to be aware of. I'm glad to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions of Mr. Shaw? No action is required on that. Item number 9A is to consider introducing an ordinance appropriating $10,000 in state drug seizure funds for transfer to the general fund to provide for document scanning and digital storage services for the police department. Mr. Hamp. Unless there are questions from council, are there any questions? If not, is there a motion to introduce the ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. This ordinance will be considered at the next regular business meeting, City Council. <coughs> Item 9B is to consider appropriating a portion of the school facility maintenance reserve in the amount of $176,000 to the general fund for the purchase of property for municipal or school purposes. Mr. Ham. So I think um, it's important to note uh, first that this uh, consideration of this appropriation ordinance will be an exception um, to our normal process and council will be asked to consider and adopt this ordinance effective this evening as an emergency procedure um, in order that we may close on the property by the end of the current calendar year and anticipating that we may not have a second meeting in December. Having said that, um, this appropriation ordinance supplies the necessary funds to acquire the property at 1018 West Main Street. Thank you. Are there any questions from council? If not, is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Marks. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Number 10 has been taken off tonight. We have no people for appointment. Number 11, communications correspondence. Mr. Hamp. The only item I have is to um, point out to council that our <coughs> second meeting in December would be scheduled for December the 26th, which is a holiday. And um, staff does not see any pressing matters um, that would prevent us from council canceling the second meeting in December if that's the council's um, desire and approve the will of council would y'all like to can we cancel our we meeting? move the meeting to the 25th of december <laughs> <laughs> i'm fine you with go the, right ahead i'm fine with the council against land. all right then we'll go ahead and cancel we, we need a, a motion to cancel since it is a regularly scheduled meeting all right so is there a motion to cancel the 26th meeting so, so moved thank you miss anderson is there a second second Thank you, Mr. Short. Uh, any other discussion? If not, all in favor of counseling it, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Ham? Uh, we have citizens. No, no, sir, I don't. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. If I, if I could just add on, kind of piggyback on to the, the real property discussion this evening. I've talked to a couple of school board members about, um, uh, I think, a, a, a nice opportunity for us to potentially uh, get together as a group and have a conversation in, uh, in January. Um, and so I would just kind of gauge council's interest in, in doing that. I think it could be a, a, um, a very welcoming opportunity to, to have a discussion about this major capital investment as we move into the new year. And I just want to see what you all thought about that. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. So you could check it out for January. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Uh, citizens comment period no one has signed up to speak sir all right is our motion to adjourn and we are adjourned